77. That's Jasper Memorial Funeral Home and Jasper Flowers and Gifts. 423-942-7777. Good morning. Uh, my name is Terry House. This is my wife, Karen House. We're with B B Messiah's Bond Servant Ministry, and we're filling in for William and Wanda Dick today. And uh, going to be here sharing the Word of God with you. Uh, my wife's going to sing, sing a song, and uh, we're both going to share some things that the Lord put on our heart. And uh, just going to minister to you on this day. And, and before we get started, I'm, I want to pray, but I, I want to welcome everybody out there, whether you're in your home or a motel room or you're listening on the radio or watching on TV. I just want to welcome you here. And I just want to ask you this day to just take the time and, and give ears to listen to what God might say to you today, because that's the only reason we come. We come to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and, uh, and his love and mercy and grace. And uh, this Sunday is a good day for you to hear that. And if you're, if you're willing to listen, I believe God will speak to you today. So uh, let's pray. Lord Jesus, I just thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for your mercy and grace and for what you did for us on the cross. Now, Lord, I pray that you send out your Holy Spirit to minister to everybody listening and everybody watching today, that they would hear from you, not from me and not from Karen, Lord, but they would hear from you. Lord Jesus, we love you and we praise you and we thank you for all that you've done in our lives. And we give this time to you that we might glorify you, Jesus, because it's all about you. And we thank you so much for your love and your grace. And we ask all of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now my wife's going to sing us a song and, uh, and share some things, and then I'll talk. Jesus, lover of my soul, Jesus, you, I will never let you go. You've taken me from the miry clay, set my feet upon a rock, and now I know. I love you, I need you, though my world may fall, I'll never let you go. My Savior, my closest friend, I will worship you until the very end. Jesus, lover of my soul, Jesus, I will never let you go. You've taken me from the miry clay, set my feet upon a rock, and now I know I love you, I need you. Though my world may fall, I'll never let you go. My Savior, my closest friend, I will worship you until the very end. Amen, amen, amen. Jesus is our friend. He's the one God sent to be one of us and to take our place, to take our punishment for sin. We've, we're all sinners. We're all born in sin. But Jesus redeemed us and made us new. Now, I'm going to share something with you uh, my testimony, and uh, there's a verse in uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. It says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear. Basically, that says you should always be ready to tell somebody what Jesus has done in your life. And if you can't tell somebody the difference that Jesus has made in your life, then you don't know him. Because if you know him, he has had an impact on your life. Now what happened to me, I was raised in the Baptist church and didn't know the Lord. And one day I was sitting in Sunday school, I was a teenager, 
And the Sunday school teacher was going around the room asking each of us to tell how we got saved. And <clears throat> the, the terminology in the Baptist church is, when did you join the church and how did that happen? And I said, well, I haven't. And she was surprised because I knew a lot about the Bible. I knew all the stories. I'd been in church all my life. But I had never made that change. I'd never made that decision for God. So it got me thinking. And so I went home, and um, I believe I was watching a Billy Graham crusade on TV. And I prayed the prayer uh, that they give at the end of the service and asked Jesus to be my Savior. And so I thought I'd done what was necessary. Nothing really changed in my life. I was still basically the same person. Well, some months later, uh, I was scheduled to go on a youth retreat with a group from my church. And I went to the home of the youth minister. My parents dropped me off. And when I went in, the man was sitting there reading the Bible. And I thought, you know, I always thought the Bible was a reference book, you know, kind of like a dictionary. You don't read it for fun. But he was sitting there. He was actually reading it. And that kind of made an, an impression on me. Well, when we went on the youth retreat, it was about a three- or four-day retreat at a uh, retreat center on a lake. And there were a bunch of other teenagers there. And I was very uncomfortable because I was overweight and didn't have a lot of friends, and so I was very self-conscious. So the first day, I was depressed. I, I had such a hard time. And then the second day, I started listening, and they were talking about the Holy Spirit. And being raised Baptist, I hadn't heard a whole lot about the Holy Spirit. And uh, they were explaining that when you have the Holy Spirit in your life, you can do the things that the Bible requires of you. And it looks like you're doing them, but it's really the Holy Spirit in you doing them. And it, they compared it to a child helping his father move furniture. You know, the father's pushing this huge couch, and the little toddler has his finger on the couch, and he thinks he's moving it. And in the same way, the Holy Spirit does the heavy lifting in, in our life. He makes it possible for us to live the Christian life. And so through that service, through that weekend, I started saying, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, that's what I want. And, and he just kept filling me and filling me and filling me. And so I didn't really know what was going on. I just knew this was great. This was something I wanted. And... That last night, a bunch of us in the girls' dormitory were sitting on the floor in the hallway sharing uh, what had happened to us that weekend. And then the leaders said, okay, anybody that wants to go to bed, go on to bed. And anybody that wants to stay up and talk some more, you can stay. So I stayed up, and they explained some more to us about the Holy Spirit. And um, then when I went to bed that night, I was on the bottom bunk, and I remember reaching up and grabbing the springs on the top bunk and saying, Lord, let this be here in the morning, because I felt such peace. Uh, it was like I'd had a storm raging inside of me all my life and didn't know it until it was gone. And my first thought when I woke up in the morning was, it's still here. And um, so the next... Mm -hmm few years, I was just learning what it was. It was actually the power of God. It was when I became aware of the presence of the Holy Spirit, the presence of Jesus inside of me. Because when you become a Christian, the Lord comes to live inside of you. And the Holy Spirit, when he's released in you in that way, is what makes it all come alive. It's... it's uh, that's when you start reading the Bible and, oh, wow, you really understand it. And you start seeing the fruit of the Spirit in your life, like it says in Galatians, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Those are the things that the Holy Spirit brings into your life that you can't do for yourself. And you begin to pray and feel like God is listening. He's listening to you. 
And when you ask something, if it's not contrary to his will, he gives it to you. Amen. What an amazing thing. Amen. Well, I wanted to read one more passage to you. I, I will say this. That was 42 years ago. And the Lord has been with me ever since. And he is faithful. And he, he blesses us. And his only desire is to bless us and to bring glory to himself through us. Amen. Now, this passage I'm going to read right here. It's a few verses in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Now all things are of God who has re reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. I lost my place, hold on. Not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Amen. Amen. You know, that's my favorite verse that it says, you know, when you think about it, that Jesus, who is God, became sin on our behalf, became sin on our behalf. You know, he, when he went to the cross, he took all of our sins. Yours, mine, everybody's. And the thing is, is that he not only took them, he became sin. He who knew no sin became sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It's so, it's such, it's so sweet and it's so amazing and it's so transforming. You know, my wife here that, you know, we've been married, I have to, 33 years, 32, 32 years, she correct, you know, us guys, we're slow, and, and we forget times and dates and stuff, but we've been married 32 years, now, I've been walking with the Lord about 34, uh, give or take a little bit, but when I came to the Lord, I came out of a lot of bad stuff, you know, I, she was walking with the Lord, I think, 12 years or close to before me. And you know that God gave me a helpmate, a, a wife who had this knowledge and wisdom in the Lord beforehand so that she could be there to help me grow in the Lord. And she did. We were friends. And God's mercy and grace that he knew ahead of time what I needed. He knew ahead of time what she needed. He knows ahead of time what you need. And the very fact that the Bible says that he was the lamb slain before the foundation of the earth. You know, I was looking at a scripture uh, uh, this week, and, and I'm going to flip over and see if I can find it uh, real quick. It's, uh, it, it's really interesting that, uh, and it's just a short little verse because it's not where I'm going to preach today. Because everything that Karen said, I want to, to, to reassure you and say the same thing. Uh, back to you because it's all about Jesus you know it's not about me and it's not about Karen and if I can't find that particular verse I had it marked earlier but you know how it is we 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 wander off somewhere else but I it was in my private time and, and I ran across this scripture and I said my goodness you know that's amazing to say that about God but uh no it's you know it's it's basically reassuring what we understand oh yeah here it is isaiah 46 uh verse 10 and, and this is talking about god let's uh let's start with verse 9 and 10 it says remember the former things of old for i am god and there is no other i am god and there is none like me declaring the end from the beginning Declaring the end from the beginning 
and from the ancient times things that are not yet done. You know, Jesus is, is referred to as the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You know, God, God knows all things, and he's not surprised by anything. And he had a way prepared for us, if we'll let him, uh, he knows you, you know, what we need. And he had a way prepared for me and Karen and, and me and her that joining us together. And, you know, it's amazing what God will do. You know, when you get to our age and you look back and you say, God did this. He put us together and we had four wonderful children and we have five grandsons and, and God continues to bless us. But more than that, the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ to teach us and to guide us and, and the way he's been with us all the time, through the hard times, through the, the easy times, the hard times, the good times, the bad times, God's always there. You know, he, he always has a way uh, about him that he's always right there when you need him, you know. But my friend, what you need to do to come to that place, that you have that kind of relationship. I'm, I'm going to say something real quickly before I go to the text of my message, because I believe it needs to be said. You know, when Adam and Eve sinned, they died spiritually. They were separated from God. If you look back in Genesis, you know, uh, Adam and Eve, uh, uh, apparently walked with God. Adam walked with God in the cool of the evening. They walked with God because when God showed up after Adam and Eve, you know, had eaten from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the only thing they were told, you cannot eat from this tree because on that day you eat from this tree, you'll surely die. And, uh, and when God showed up and they heard his voice, they, they, they hid from him. And they had covered themselves in fig leaves. And you know, the thing is, is when God showed up, he said, uh, who told you you were naked, Adam? You know, now God knew. You know, he, he declared things from the beginning to the end. He knows all things. But he asked Adam, who told you? And, and of course, we know the rest of the story there. But the thing is, is they were scared of his voice. But you know, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they will not follow the voice of the stranger. When you come back into the relationship that God has for us in Christ Jesus and you're born again, the Bible says you're born again, you're born new, you're a new creation in Christ. You have the spirit of God and God pours out his spirit on you and you're baptized in his Holy Spirit and you're filled with his Holy Spirit. What happens is, is that you hear the voice of God. And you know, the, the Lord is always there speaking to his children. Now, the, the problem with it is, is if we walk by the Spirit, we hear God clearly. But when we walk according to the flesh, we think we're hearing God sometimes and we're not. But Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And I can tell you over the years in my life, walking with the Lord, I'm so grateful that I hear his voice because he tells me at times, you know, get ready for this, uh, go this way, don't go that way, you know, and, and I've made mistakes in my life and I realized when I did not walk by the spirit and I made that wrong step, but he's always there correcting me as a son, you know, and, and putting me back on the course that he wants me to be on. So I want to encourage you if you're listening today is, Karen gave her testimony, you know. I mean, I never get tired of hearing it, you know, because, you know, I, I loved Jesus as a kid and a child, and, and I came to Jesus as a child, you know, and in a, in a very similar way than she did. But the difference is, is I rejected and turned away from God in my teenage years, and I spent 10 years denying Christ, you know, uh, I'm going to tell you, my friend, the Bible says if we deny him before men, he will deny us before the Father. And as I nearly died, and as I was about to die from the sin that I was caught up in, I cried out to God, the one I knew as a child, and he saved me, and he brought me back to him. It took a process of a year there, but then after walking with him a very short time, actually, I, I met my wife. 
and we became close friends. So God has a plan, and God is moving right now. He's moving where you're at. You know, I believe what Karen has shared today is is already working in some of your lives. And before I say anything else, I want to say to you, you need to hear. If you have a testimony, you know, of what God's done in your life, you know, you share that before men. And if you don't have a testimony, but you claim to be a Christian, as I read these scriptures today that I'm going to read, I want you to think about that because if you don't have a testimony, you know, my wife, when we're out doing street ministry, a lot of times I'll be preaching and standing with the cross. And we've done this in various places as, uh, in, over the years. And and she'll be talking one-on-one -on -one and handing out tracts and witnesses and, and witnessing. And we've led quite a few people to the Lord. Uh, you know, it's not about numbers. It's about the ones that actually come to the Lord and become his children that's, that's important. Excuse me. <coughs> but anyway... Uh, over the years I've watched and you know when she'll ask somebody tell me your testimony and they don't have one you know brother William says this all the time he says if uh, if nothing changed when you got saved you probably didn't get saved you know and I, and I want to say to you now religion is is useless if you don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ you know uh Pure religion, Jesus said, is to minister to the widows and the orphans and the poor, you know, and, and, and the religion we have today, a lot of folks believe uh, they're going to be on that day, and the scripture I'm going to read today is going to go into this, but uh, as I go to read this, I want you to think about what Karen said uh, about that testimony. Do you have a testimony of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done in your life? Is he continually working in your life? Now, listen to the Spirit today and not to the words from men and hear what he's saying to you this day because it's important. It's important. You can have everything that God intended for you to have if you'll just come to him. Okay, now I'm going to read to you in Matthew today, Matthew 7. It's kind of interesting, you know, I know you guys don't know this, and you, whether you believe it or not, we didn't even know what, I didn't know what she was going to say, and she didn't know what I was going to say. But in, in chapter 7 of Matthew, I want to read this to you today, starting with verse 13. It says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You, may, you will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruit, you will know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Therefore, therefore, notice Jesus. This is at the end of the Sermon of the Mount. And Jesus says something that he's going to make a point. He says, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken to him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat on the house, and it did not fall. For it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand and the rain descended and the flood came and the wind blew and beat on the house and it fell and great was its fall. Lord, I pray right now 
that you move right now on everybody listening in Jesus' name. You know, this is at the end there where he's talking. This is the end of the Sermon on the Mount. You know, if we're going to look at something, you know, 5, 6, and 7 here of Matthew is the Sermon on the Mount. And, and the Lord had me reading that this week. And I could read the whole thing today, but I don't believe he wants me to. And, and you know what's interesting is, is that I timed it. It takes 15 minutes to read it. And, and, the, and the ground that's covered there, the ground that's covered uh, it's so amazing what Jesus preaches in this 5, 6, and 7 in, in, in 15 minutes or less it takes to read it. He covers so much ground. As a minister, as a preacher, I could preach for years in these verses and never run out of material. Never run out of material. You know, And maybe that's because as men, we waste words. We, we say things that aren't necessary. Jesus went right to the heart of the matter, you know? And, and in these scriptures that I've read, if you'll notice something, what Karen was talking about in her testimony, she's talking about, uh, you know, uh, how the Lord had worked in her life and, and, and being able to give a testimony. You know, when you look here in these scriptures, and you look what, what Jesus said, not me, not her, not anybody else, what Jesus said. He, he points out something here, and you look at what I started with, enter by the narrow gate. You know, if you look in America today, and we all know this, everyone's a Christian. Not, not so much as it used to be. You know, now we've gone astray, and, and even our government says we're not a Christian nation anymore, and and we, as a free nation, and, and someone said to me this week or last week about the freedoms that are allowed in America are only there because we were founded as a Christian nation where we believed in religious freedom and it's in our constitution. So there are many religions that, that uh, can, can be free to operate in their beliefs in America that can in other parts of the world. You know, I can't go in... Some countries in in in, uh, in in Saudi Arabia or maybe Iran or Iraq and preach Jesus. You know they they don't allow it. It's only uh, Islam. But in America, Muslims can preach their religion. You know, I believe it's a false religion. It's sending tons of people to hell because Jesus said there's only one way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. There's only one way. Now, I preach that. But I believe you have the freedom to differ with me in America because as the founding fathers set it up, they set it up for freedom, freedom of beliefs. And you can't do that anywhere else. And as things erode in America, we see that changing. But in America, back to the point, there are, you know, it's still, you know, if I go down the road and I talk to somebody and I say, uh, are you a Christian? Oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. I go to church. I've been in church all my life. I've been a Christian all my life. And you say, well, tell me your testimony. Well, I've been a Christian all my life. <laughs> You know, oh, well, is that your testimony? You've been a Christian all your life. Well, you know, it used to be you were born a Christian in some countries in Europe. As they strayed away from the original gospel that was spread, they became Christians by birth. You were born a Catholic. You were born a Christian. You were born a, a, a Lutheran or whatever denomination, you know. But you didn't have that relationship that we read about in the Word where you come to a knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and you're born again. You know, you can't just, you know, you got to be born again. If you're going to be born into the kingdom of God, you're going to be born again through Christ Jesus. Because unless you come, you look right down here, you see that cross? Unless you come through what happened in the work of the cross and what Jesus did on the cross, and unless you come through what he did, what, what Karen read uh uh, he who knew no sin became sin on our behalf that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Unless you come through Calvary, through the cross, unless you come through what Jesus paid for you, you know. And when you come through the cross, you know, everybody is on one side of the cross. 
And then they come to the cross, and what do you do? The Bible says he's talking about you're gonna, you know, who go? What happens to people when they get crucified? They die. Amen. Okay, 